Hey, 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 hi, everybody. I hope you're all having a good day. I hope you're all smiling and enjoying your lovely day. In this following tutorial, I'll be showing you on how to set up prop tracking in Waterdo using Steam VR trackers. So, before we get started, if you are an advanced user and you already know the technical aspects of supported trackers for prop, uh, for prop tracking, please skip to this timestamp here. Otherwise, for the current timestamp that we are in right now, we're going to be talking about what are you know what are the trackers that allow proper prop tracking so if by chance you don't have vr trackers in any way shape or form you can't afford it you don't have it there is a way you can actually do prop tracking for free i don't have a tutorial on it though but you can check out extra animator they have prop tracking via webcam you can check it out i'll leave the github and the developer social media in the description below so you can check it out Otherwise, let's talk about positional and rotational only tracking because this is very important to know about this. Technically, you can think of it as IMU versus optical tracking solutions when you kind of think about it that way. Uh, but again, I cannot guarantee that all IMUs are rotational only. For the most part, they are, but I don't know if there is an IMU solution out there that does do positional. So don't quote me on that, but I'll still at least like for the most part summarize it as such. So when it comes to positional tracking, this allows you to move something from one place to another, which is why many people tend to get Vive 3.0, Vive 2.0, Vive 1.0, or Tundra trackers, any sort of optical based solution. There's even the Vive Ultimate trackers, which if you don't have base stations, but you still want to get Vive trackers at a little bit more, a little bit more of an affordable price, then yes, you can get Vive Ultimate trackers. Those can work as prop trackers. So Keep that in mind. You do make sure, um, unless the Vive Ultimates are out of beta, you still need to use the beta for the third party support thing. And yeah, so just keep that in mind. So that's something I would heavily recommend. I'm using a 3.0 for this tutorial, but if you don't have, uh, like if you either don't have the space or the funds for the Vive or Tundra trackers, then there is rotational only trackers, which are pretty much the IMUs like SlimeVR, Makopi, Rebocap, Axie, Stonex, Haratoria, Unimotion. Pretty much there's a lot of IMU solutions and they're still growing really fast. So for IMU solutions, these are typically rotational only because they don't know where they are in the real world. So for optical tracking solutions, because of the cameras, they have absolute positioning. But IMU trackers like VR, they don't have absolute positioning. They don't know where the heck they are in the real world. They're only guessing based on gyroscopes. So keep in mind that if you're going to use a VR for prop tracking, you can't move it from one place to another, but you can use it to rotate stuff. So let's say, for example, a chair, a chair tends to rotate a lot. And let's say if you want to get that track, like actual tracking going on with that, you could use a slime VR, place it on your chair and you can have it where your chair pretty much just rotates and you can actually do that pretty much. That, that'd be a very fun idea. Or um, there's other things you could do, but again, that's just an example. And an example for positional tracking is that you could do things like grabbing an object and like throwing it across the room as long as you have proper cushioning. So let's say if I don't know, I take like a giant box as a VTuber and I'm like, okay, I want this box to be tracked in Wadudo and I want to throw it at my audience or something like that. And IRL that vibe tracker just go like, it just goes on the bed or cushion or something. So that's something you could do so hopefully the information i gave you regarding the technical stuff kind of hopefully that helps you out if you're still confused feel free to leave your questions in the comments below or again join the wadudo discord server or um like you, yeah you can pretty much join there ask questions and you know the community will be there to help you out regarding that so now let's get into how to set up steam vr for prop tracking because the thing with steam vr is that it requires your head mount and we don't like headsets for vtubing unless you got a quest pro and you want that face tracking though i don't blame you for that but if you don't use a headset you don't want to be using like you don't want to like have your pc be tanking while using your vive trackers or something like that then we need to do some edits so over here in the github there are some instructions here even for my linux people there's there's this as well but we're going to focus this on Windows. So we're going to talk about null driver and the Steam VR config file. So we'll be talking about that. So 
Go ahead and open up your file explorer here. I'm going to go over to my local disk. Now, again, you'll need to make sure that Steam VR is installed on your PC. I don't know where it is for your PC. You'll have to figure it out by, again, going to Steam, finding Steam VR, right click, go to properties. And then there should be like a section where you can find your installed files. Like, where are they located? For my case, I'm going to do it like this. So I'm going to go here to local disk, program files, 86. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to find the Steam uh, folder right here. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find the Steam apps folder right here. Then I'm going to go into common right here. Then I'm going to go ahead and go into Steam VR. Then I will go into the drivers. We're going to do the first thing being the null driver file. We're going to go into the folder that says null, then go into resources settings and then default VR settings. Right click on that, then go either use notepad or notepad plus plus. Notepad plus plus is free, by the way. I'll use this, but you can use this one. And then all you're going to do is that for this first part right here, you're going to make sure that this is set to true. So enable true. Type that out because uh, again, it will look like this by default. It will be set to false. We want this true so that way it pretty much helps to force SteamVR not to detect our headset. Pretty much. Again, for my VR chat people, um, I have not tested this for VR chat, but if you are VR chat and VTubing, I would definitely keep in mind that if your headset's not detecting properly, you may want to change this to false again if that helps you. But this, at least for my use case, it helped me. So keep that in mind. Now I'm going to leave that. I'll exit. Make sure you do control S, by the way. And then what you'll do is that I'm going to go back to Steam VR right here. Then I'm going to go into resources. Then I'm going to go into settings. And over here, there's another default VR settings right here. Ignore all the other files. Focus on this one. So right click on default VR settings. Go into edit notepad right here. And then there should be a couple things you'll need to edit. The require head mount needs to be set to false. By default, this will be set to true. So make sure this is set to false. So that way with Steam VR, they don't force you to have that headset. In fact, actually, even if you have the null driver, like if you didn't set up the null driver, what this will do is that you can actually preview like your trackers, like you can connect your trackers first and then you can do the headset later. So that's something I noticed. It helped me out with testing slime VRs. So do that. Make sure that the fourth driver is set to null like this. And then I believe this is already default already, but just in case the fourth HMD, head mount set make sure that one just blank like that i believe that's default already but just make sure that it looks like this so these first three make sure you copy how it looks right here just replace the word and you're good and then one more thing you'll have to do i believe if you're a first time base station user this is something i had to experience you may not have to do it but i would recommend do it anyways is that you're going to find the let me see find it here it should be right here so right here in this section here it's called activate multiple drivers set this to true for my case it allowed my base station to be properly detected but for your case i don't know um but i would heavily just recommend just have that on just in case especially doing like advanced stuff like this so once you have those set up make sure to do control s and make sure steam vr was closed the entire time as you can see so you can go ahead and exit uh notepad and once you have those things saved if you want again for vr chat vtubing you could save a duplicate and then just override when needed if you want uh but again that's that's for you to determine if you need to do that for me i don't need to do that i don't really do vr chat that much so i'm i'm all good so now what we're going to do is we're going to open up steam vr and i already have my base stations connected and i have my vibe tracker on my hand and there may be a bit of some lag so please excuse the lag steam vr just yes yeah, uh steam vr does use a lot of specs so uh excuse that so there you go Yep, and there you go. I have my Vive Tracker and my base station. I have another one that's all the way back here for if I do full body stuff. So there you go. See, 
base station right there. So if you ever notice that a base station of yours is like doing that, then yeah, just make sure your vibe tracker is like in front of it. It'll be fine. So once you have all your stuff here, I heavily recommend for prop tracking, do one tracker at a time just so you don't lose track of which tracker is which. So just do it one at a time. So yeah, but we're going to go over here to water dough right here. And we're going to go over here to add asset. Then you're going to go into motion capture here. Then Steam VR prop tracker. And then what you're going to do after me experiencing lag right there, I'm going to set the device to the tracker of choice. Like I said, set this one at a time to make sure you don't get confused on which tracker is which. Um, so I could do that now. Reference frame is referring to if your model is using like, let's say you have Vi like full body tracking with Tundra or Vive, for example, then you could have it where it can actually reference it for better accuracy when you're interacting with it. So I could set this to character instead. For my case, I am not using VR, tra uh, VR trackers on my body. So or yeah, like because I'm just iPhone. So for this, even if I set it up, it's not going to really do anything unless I have the uh, Steam VR trackers. So keep that in mind. Now we're going to need a prop right here. So let's go ahead and add a prop. So let's add asset. We're going to go over here to props here and then we'll add a prop. Now I'm uh, once it kind of loads up a bit. Sorry for the lag. I'm going to go to source here and I'm going to go here and find my beloved son, Mr. Fluffy Canary, which he should be right about here, Mr. Fluffy Canary. And he should be in the center of the world. We can make him a giant burb. There you go. Like that. And now once we have that, we're going to go ahead to um yeah, once you have the source set up here, you're going to go back to Steam VR prop tracker and you're going to set the target asset to prop. And then you'll notice when I move my Vive tracker, it actually resets the position. But there you go. See, the bird is moving. You may have to correct it by moving it around, uh, which I would. Yeah, I would just recommend like moving this instead, because as you can see, since the Steam VR prop tracker here is actually moving the values here. Yeah, so just move if you need your prop to be in a specific way uh, or a specific place, just move that here instead. And you can see how Mr. Fluffy Canary is flying. Yay! And that's pretty much how you can set up prop tracking. Again, it may take some trial and error on like setting it up. You, if by chance, again, some things look in inaccurate to you, maybe try adjusting where your base stations are or where the tracker is located. But at least it does work. I can, I can just shake it. Ah! I could just, yeah, I could just shake the bird. I don't think he likes this, but you know what? It, it goes to show it's 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 working and like I said positional vibe 3.0 so either way I hope that this tutorial helps you out I hope you can do some funny stuff with this because this is so funny hello Mr. Fluffy Canary who's upside down now so yeah um best of luck to you using uh prop trackers again if you have issues please join the water door discord server and uh again if if, like I said, if you have questions for me specifically, I have... Thank you to all my Snowflake members. In case you don't know, I have YouTube membership. So if you want to further support this channel and what I do, then feel free to join the Snowflake members. Otherwise, though, just your support means so much to me, and I appreciate every ounce of it. Either way, though, with that being said, though, hey, 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 goodbye, bye, everyone. I hope to see you guys next time, okay? Bye-bye.